Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to study sickle cell anemia. Sickle, sickle, sickle cell anemia is a hereditary disease which transfers from parents to their offspring. There are different types of sickle cell anemia. As you know that anemia is, the, is a deficiency of blood, especially red blood cells. So there are three major types of sickle cell anemia, nutritional deficiency, such nutrition like iron, vitamin C, which are very essential for the formation of hematopoiesis, especially red blood cell. If there is a lack of these nutrients in the diet, then a person can suffer from anemia or sometimes sickle cell anemia. The second type is aplastic anemia, which is usually uh, results as a as a result of problem of defects in the bone marrow because most of the red blood cells are formed in red bone marrow of our bones so if there is any problem in the bone marrow we could have a sickle cell anemia the third type of anemia is anemia of chronic disease sometime Chronic diseases also cause anemia like kidney disease, liver disease and some other diseases in the body can also lead to anemia. So what are the signs uh, and symptoms which can show you that a person is having anemia or sickle cell anemia? These are the following system which can be used to diagnose, help in the diagnosis of of sickle cell anemia first of all there is a blood deficiency anemia shortness of breath due to the deficiency of oxygen level episodes of pain in different body areas depending upon the severity of the disease swelling of hands and feet frequent infection and delayed growth in children growth delayed growth and development in young children and infants and vision problem is also one of the example of the symptoms of sickle cell anemia. So how, what is sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell anemia is a deficiency of red blood cells in the body. So what happens? In this condition, first of all, we are going to look at the diagram of a normal person. This is the blood vessel capillaries of a normal person which is transporting blood and you can see right over here red blood cells which are oval and biconvex uh, biconcave cells which usually contain 95 percent of protein which is known as hemoglobin hemoglobin is oxygen carrying protein which transport oxygen from our lungs into the tissues of the body so these normal cells are transported through blood capillaries very easily. These cells are flexible and can easily pass through tiny capillaries of our body. And in sickle cell anemia, this is the blood capillary or blood vessel of a sickle cell patient. And as you can see, this is the cross section of a normal red blood cell which contain membrane, flexible membrane and inside it there is a hemoglobin. And in this diagram, which is sickle cell patient, you can see that the cells RBC, blood cells, has become sickle shape or crescent shape due to the lack of a, due to the presence of a faulty hemoglobin protein due to mutations in the genes. So what happens uh, when all these sickle cells passes through tiny capillaries, they stuck over there and they stick together, making a blockage and uh, can also lead to stroke or heart attack if they, this blockage is in the brain or in heart respectively. And usually these uh, sickle shaped cells cannot transport oxygen and there will be deficiency of oxygen in the tissue which may cause hypoxia and other complications in the body. So this is the cross section of a faulty cell which is sickle cell. It has a sickle shaped body or crescent shape and the hemoglobin present in it is faulty. So, the, what is the major cause of these sickle cell 
RBCs which cause sickle cell anemia it is the only cause is mutation in hemoglobin beta chain cells or hemoglobin beta chain genes so how this happens sometime it so happens that in a person exposed to x rays which are very damaging which are very mutagenic effects which can cause mutations in our body like ultraviolet rays toxin certain chemicals and drugs can also uh, used as a mutagens and cause mutation in our body when mutation takes place in our body and it this mutation usually occurs at cellular level in the nucleus in the chromosome in the dna at genes level and when these genes faulty genes are passed from one generation to another generation these genes expresses themselves in uh, next progeny and can lead to serious illnesses which are known as genetic defects so it is basically genetic disease hereditary disease which is transferred from one person to other person or one parents to their offspring so i have taken an example right over here so this is a normal gene of a normal person this gene is present in as you know that in the dna and dna contain a sequence of three nucleotides which are known as codons which are essential or which are codes for certain amino acids which make up proteins and as you know that hemoglobin is also a protein which is composed of four chains two alpha chains and two beta chains each alpha chain contain 141 amino acids and each beta chain contain 146 amino acids so total number is 574 so these 574 amino acids make up hemoglobin hemoglobin can bind oxygen which is very essential part of the red blood cell for the transport of oxygen into the body so in the normal person there is a normal gene hbb gene ctc cytosine thiamine cytosine when transcription occurs and messenger rna is formed this code will be complementary guanine adenine and guanine when this messenger rna codon is translated it means into amino acid into protein this gag codes for an amino acid which is known as glutamic acid so each beta chain contain 500 sorry each beta chain contain 146 amino acid and number seven number six is proline number seven is glutamic acid and number eight is also glutamic acid so glutamic acid if it is in normal position then hemoglobin which is formed by these genes will be normal and the red blood cell are also going to be normal and inside the hemoglobin will also be normal and you can see right over this will be the result a normal person is going to have normal rbc normal transport of oxygen and no problem at all but when mutations occur this is not going to happen so what happened mutation takes place at the genetic level so this is a normal gene ctc but due to the mutagen mutation has occurred now this gene has been changed cac what happened the middle nucleotide which is thiamine has been substituted with adenine single base pair has been changed so base pair you have substituted and the code has become cytosine adenine cytosine this is called sickle cell anemia gene when this gene present on the dna template strand is transcribed into messenger rna codon this codon will be guanine uracil guanine this is mutated gene when this mutated gene present on messenger rna is translated into protein now this gug will not code for glutamic acid while it is will code for another amino acid villain which is at number seven position it's supposed to be glutamic acid but now due to the mutation glutamic acid has been changed into villain so number six is proline number seven should be glutamic acid but it is villain and number eight is glutamic only one gene one base pair changes change make a change in the amino acid and this amino acid wrong faulty amino acid will change the whole structure of hemoglobin and this homoglobin 
will change the whole structure of RBC and will convert this normal RBC into sickle cell RBC. And this cell will, will be, will, uh, uh, this, these cells are going to be released inside the bloodstream. When these cells are released in the bloodstream, this will happen. Blood, uh, blood capillaries are going to be clogged and there will be blockage and there will be, be no oxygen to the body tissue. And the result is sickle cell anemia. So sickle cell anemia can cause so many different uh, complications in the body. So it has to be taken care of. So what is the method to diagnose it? Then we have, the doctor has to do some tests, blood tests to diagnose that it's really a sickle cell anemia. When it is diagnosed, then we come towards the treatment. There is no treatment for the sickle cell anemia. The only way to treat is certain medication to cope with the complications and blood transfusion that the person or the patient blood has to be changed at regular interval but it is not easy sometime when the blood group is very very uh, different like o negative so it is very difficult to find blood group in blood in such a blood groups so then there is a treatment for all there is also treatment for a sickle cell anemia which is known as gene therapy or bone marrow transplant so what we can do that we can trans and exchange, uh, remove faulty bone marrow from the patient's body and replace it with a healthy bone marrow of a healthy person. This is very expensive and it is not always uh, hundred give hundred percent result. So it is always risky. So uh, it is very important that we diagnose sickle cell anemia at early stages, and, uh, and we can save the life of our young patients because so many young children are dying due to this disease. That's all for today. If you like this video, please also share with your friends and I'll see you in the next lecture. Until then, bye.